Debbie's pointing to the ceiling. <laughs> now she says okay. she doesn't know. This is um, Deep Dive with Into Mysticism with Rabbi Akiva on Tuesday, July 14th. Welcome, and we are ready to begin, Rabbi. So thank you, Marsha. Good morning, everyone. Okay, so Hevra, we're, we're uh, going to be wrapping up the, the yud Hey vav Hey. Uh, predominantly uh, Reb Zalman's uh, take take on it. So we have done. Uh, I I feel like like uh, we need this we need this under our belts uh, to a point where I feel like asking you uh, testing the students. Uh, uh, whether whether you whether you have it down uh, conceptually and e even even visually uh, that that the yud hey vav hey has four four representative uh, attributes uh, that we should we should have in mind it's a, it's a hard thing to do but what, when we recite the shema which we'll talk about a little bit later uh we we should be jumping from world to world uh that the that the bottom hay represents the attribute of i'm i'm going to i'm going to just ask for a sec whether you guys have it down uh, because because it is fairly it is fairly simple to to memorize these terms and have it fixed in in our consciousness. Uh, so the bottom hay of the yud hay vav hay, if 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 you're going to treat it, the yud hay vav hay in in a vert in a vertical uh, uh, graphic, the bottom hay was. Someone tell me in one word. This is a test. This is a test. You feel free to unmute yourself if you know the answer to a key. The, bo the bottom hay. Mike. Source. Source. Divine energy. The bottom. The. The bottom hay was the bottom hay was the source of of it all. Yes. And and if you want to substitute other other uh, things for source, if that doesn't resonate with you, then then find something that is uh, that that is closer to what resonates with you. Uh, as long as it as long as it uh, connotes. Uh, uh, so, source of all. The Vav, so we have source, the Vav is flow. Is what? Flow. Flow? Yes. I like the word flow, but uh, it was it was the f flow, or the what we say what we call in Hebrew the sh and and Mike you 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 know this word well uh, the the flow or the shefa of love the the. The vav, the, the vav, the vav, what was representative of the attribute that builds upon source and says that, that the ultimate source of all is sourced, is energized through love. The vav is love, is associated with 
the the spherotic attribute of chesed. The top hay. The so yet. We have source, love, the top hay. Is is no is knowing and that was we associated with with if vav was associated with chesed with love then the hey above it was in the spherotic chart uh, has to be uh, above chesed, and we associated the hay with with chachma. That it, it represents the attribute that that <laughs> uh, ironically that that everything uh, everything ultimately ultimately at the end of the story everything is clear. It is the knowing that it is the perfect knowing. And the yud, the, the top yud. Beyond what we live in. Indoors, beyond. Deeper no than deep. paradoxes. Absolutely no paradoxes. The, the yud, uh, the yud is clarity. Is, is a it, uh, you're you're no. both right. Is 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 a type of knowing. Is a type of knowing that is beyond paradox. That is, uh, it just it just. It just is. So, friends, so so. Oh, that, that that's good. You guys, you guys uh, got it, got it right on. <laughs> so, when we say when we do Shema Yisrael, Yud Hey Vav Hey is source is love. And all, all of the the attributes of the yud hey vav hey, we conclude and say and say that that yud hey vav hey with its a, attendant manifestations and attributes, that yud hey vav hey happens to be. The last word of the six words happens to be echad. The echadness of the yud he vav he is inextricably interconnected. It is the 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 essence of the yud he vav he in our proclamation that yud he vav he and all of its uh, all of its uh, 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 manifestations you should know as you proclaim this is echad and nothing but echad so we have to ask ourselves the question what, what are we saying here <laughs> What are we exactly saying? What what should be our our kavana when we are proclaiming not to not to God, but when we are proclaiming to ourselves? Don't forget, Shema is not one of those prayers that we are when we speak, so to speak, to God. That's the Amidah. That's the Amidah. 
That's a private, uh, the private meditation. Shema is a proclamation to you, Yisrael. So what do we have in mind? What is the kavana as we say, yud hey vav hey, and all its attending attributes is echad, is one. And I'm going to use the word one uh, with, with uh, I'd like you to visualize it because I'm going to use the word one with a capital uh, O. When I, when, I, when I use the one. So let's, let's uh, clarify uh, one or two things firstly. If you look in any Siddur, I want you to know, and any prayer service in Jewish liturgy, I'd like you all to realize that all prayers lead to Shema. All prayers lead to Shema. The focal point of all the prayers in the Siddur before Shema and after Shema, all are all come out of those six words: Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. As the angels, so to speak, in this as as reflected in the Sidur, as the angels, the celestial beings, don't take me literally. But as the angels are saying kadosh, 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 holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, we are proclaiming and reciting Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Right? We have that, that so to speak, that, cor that, that chorus, that corresponding choir. They are saying kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Uh, uh, because, because, gosh, the the angels and the higher entities and the higher beings uh, do not take me literally uh, are in full realization, full awareness of the holiness of divinity, as they, so to speak, are 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 are. Choiring, kadosh, 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 Adonai tzvaot melochal haaretz kevodo. We are, so to speak, responding. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. The Shema is the in in Jew in in Jewish tradition and as reflected in the Talmud and all of Jewish literature the Shema this call of Shema Yisrael the inner devotion that is expected, the mindfulness that is expected in the recitation of the Shema. Uh, in Jewish literature, uh, I can say that the word kavana, the inner direction, the inner focus that, it, that we call kavana was invented by the requirement 
that the Shema needs to be, uh, requires to be recited. The word kavana does not appear in Jewish literature until it comes firstly uh, in relation to the recitation of those six words. That is when Jewish literature and history starts uh, thinking about and starts introducing the whole idea of kavana. Isn't that interesting? So if the Shema requires this type of intense meditative uh, experiential thing, then Jewish, Jewish tradition extends that to all mitzvot and all things that we do uh, as we speak on Thursdays. Uh, the the absolute vital importance of our kavana, our input, our directed focus and mindfulness, uh, tar targeting what we are doing. That kind of mindfulness was invented only in relation to the mitzvah of proclaiming the unity of God through the recitation of Shema. It gives us a little indication of the primus, primacy of, of, this, of this particular mitzvah of reciting the Shema twice a day. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on because I want us I want us as a group, with, with your permission, of course, as, as a group to, to, uh, to commit ourselves to the recitation of Shema on a, on a very practical, literal level as a group and, and not to skirt the not only the obligation but the but the opportunity of the experience of of entering into the experience of even for a moment of saying those six words with a super kind of Kavana and directed intention that that we might be skirting and not realizing uh, how how ridiculous how ridiculous the pri the primal mitzvah of of a conscious Jew. <laughs> is the recitation of Shema. What, why aren't we doing it on a regular basis? Why aren't we using the Shema as a formula for, for uh, a, 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 a moment in, in our day for a deeper type of experiential uh, meditative uh, moment in our lives? It, it's essential. It's, uh, it's, It's elementary. <laughs> it's elementary. But we'll talk about that later. We want to talk about within the word echad, which means one, with a capital O, a capital O. Echad means one. It also uh, I like I like the the word echad meaning you, unique unique of the unique. There, there is nothing like the 
the echadness, the unity of divinity. There is nothing to be compared. What one means it, it is incomparable. It's not only incomprehensible, the, the unity is not only, the, the degree of unity is not only in, incomprehensible, it is also incomparable to any sort of unity that we can ever experience on, on this reality. So certainly echad does not mean one as opposed to two. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a pshat level, uh, that's what it means. When we were still in the mode, uh, when human consciousness was still in the mode of, of uh, approaching divinity uh, on, on, on a pluralistic level, th that there are many deities that are that are uh, conflicting with each other and one, one deity conquers the other one and there's a whole bunch of divine one-upmanship uh, happening. This God is better than that God. This one is strong. Okay, so w hopefully we have grown out of that and we've matured, we've matured theologically out of that. But nevertheless, there, so what one, one, divinity as opposed to two, uh, I think we can take as obvious. So if it doesn't differentiate uh, between, if echadness does not talk to us any longer in the language of plurality, then what exactly is echadness? Uh, uh, we have to say that there, there are, are really, <laughs> ironically, paradoxically, there are two types of unity. There is a higher unity and there is a lower unity. Oh, so, Echad. Echad means oneness means to see through to the oneness of two truths to recognize that what we call the one beyond and the one within are the same one. I will explain. I will explain. Remember we spoke, uh, and I'll remind you if, if you weren't there, we spoke many times about uh, a, a vertical God, what, what used to be called a vertical God. A vertical God is, is, say, is, is still still attached to the imagery of a god up there. And we, we have a lot of those anthropomorphic things uh, in our tradition, in our literature, uh, which I think uh, on one level was, again, there to help us a little bit, but ultimately did, uh, in, in the, at the same time, did, did a lot of harm, did a lot of harm. Uh, when we speak about the God of uh, the God, the God of the heavens, w what does uh, on on one level we have Shamayim Va'aretz, the God of heavens, who dwells on earth, but what what does that create in us? It creates a a type of, of thing that I think we learn, that we learned in, in grade one or grade two or grade three in Hebrew school uh, at bar or bat mitzvah lessons. Uh, it created an imagery that is 
that 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 I think correct me if I'm wrong that I think is extremely extremely difficult to to shake <laughs> even for sophisticated and mature people educated theologically astute people it it, it is something that that ha has been inbred it has its place it has its place but the harm that it does to us i see as not not worth it the the meta those metaphors are are simply not worth it because what we learn in grade two or three somehow it uh it, it doesn't let us go <laughs> it doesn't let us go into into a realm uh that we ought to be going uh to so can i ask a question Rabbi, about that sure, sure but sure uh okay. again Mar marcia's the one to uh to mo uh to monitor all this okay. but agree go ahead go ahead so why can't we have both you know why why can't we use the that image of god in heaven because it's not that it's not there's a beauty in that in a way yes and it's hard yeah. to give up that beauty yes and so why can't i have both like the one which is we we uh, without we, any attribute at we, all we, we are going to we <laughs> we are going to end up with both the 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 question is we we have to be totally engaged in 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 both to find but to to ultimately find that they are going to be one uh so so we have to take that journey we have to take that journey and we have to reconcile we have to reconcile those imageries of vertical god uh with the imagery of god as other mm -hmm. god as other uh before we get before we get we have to grapple with it we have to live in both worlds Places. it both in both worlds before we are able conceptually to even attempt to grasp the unity uh, that exists within those two and that that is actually Shabri, the purpose of of my my uh, teaching here is so, is, so rabbi maybe yeah. it would be best it maybe it would be best to just go for the highest that's it not even look at the heavenly beauty uh, that is it is the heavenly beauty anyway we're going we're going to see we're going to okay. see okay we're going to see why 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 it is actually uh, a a a necessary step to use these metaphors of earth and heaven uh, us and yeah. god uh so so we're gonna see what 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 the advantages are what the benefits are and what the trappings are thank you rabbi bruce has his hand up yeah bruce -a morning rabbi um I thought, at least I believed and still believe to this moment, subject to your reaction, that most of us understood that God is everywhere, up, down, to the side, here, here there, everywhere, in everything, in everyone. So, 
it seems to a person like myself who has that, I don't know, maybe misunderstanding that the concept of heaven and earth or lower, um, let alone will exclude uh, hell as, as, as anything, uh, was, although some people believe in it, um, I'm, I'm lost in this configuration, this, uh, for the moment, uh, understanding or lack of understanding on my part of the up and down. Thank you. I hear Bruce. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so, so, uh, L let me answer you directly right now and 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 indirectly as as we go go uh, further in in the teaching okay the the problem and the challenge bruce y yes you are correct <laughs> we can very easily say that god is divinity is in everything there is nothing outside of the of the of divinity but on this realm of existence in this world that truth that reality is not sometimes but very 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 often unclear that truth is unclear every day i we walk around and we do not see a reflected divinity of goodness and kindness uh, around us in the manifested world, we actually see some of some of the the greatest antithesis of divinity uh, that is reflected in this world on the Malchut level. We see the antithesis. We see evil all around us. We see darkness all around us. We see inequality all around us. And the divinity of the presence of God is very, very dim, <laughs> if, if we want to be honest, is very dim. So that poses a, a question to us that I don't see, I don't feel, uh, that melochal haaretz kevodo that your glory fills uh, every every inch of reality. We see contradiction to that. So we're going to so so that's my first question to you. Um, I, my first response uh, to your thing is that it's not so. Uh, it 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 you made it sound so so simple so did the mystics but you made it found so you made it sound so simple and it and it's not as simple as that because i see in the kingdom of god which we call reality which we call the malchut level i don't see a a proper reflection of divinity in everything or at least it's very hard it's very difficult to extract so let, let let us work with the first premise however of echadness and this is uh really a a d direct response bruce to your question wh where i'm going with this how i'm uh, uh, continuing the first rule, the first idea of talking about Yudhe Vavhe being one, 
God, divinity, being the, the one, the one, the only one, the only reality in, in, in reality, the only one reality, that rule number one is we cannot reach the inner gate we cannot reach the higher unity unless we go through the outer gate of discovering and embracing the divine presence as it fills the world. The higher unity of divinity is impossible to reach unless we go through Malchut, unless we go through the manifestation and the paradoxical contradictions that occur in this reality that we call our lives. The first rule of, of, of being aware of Echad is not in the higher realm of Keter. That is not the way we ought to be doing it. The way to divinity and the way to re, a realization of the unity, the Echadness of the world, is only through the world, not around the world. The way for us to glimpse at the unity that binds all things in this world together into one unit is the way to get there is, is to expose ourselves to the, to the richness and the diversity of life here in the here and the now. To expose ourselves to, to people, to colors, to the sheer beauty and diversity of the world, it is through that reality that we are going to come to know a, a, a little bit of the echadness, the unity that binds the world together. Even, friends, e even re religious, religions, I'm sorry, religions, and what we call the spiritual experience, think about it for a moment, what we call high religion, lofty spiritual experiences, is largely the, ex the experience of imminence, of imminence, not transcendence. Our spiritual experiences mostly occur on the imminent level. The imminent level meaning that divinity, the divine, is dressed up in garments of the world. That's what imminence means. That divinity is, is dressed up in the garments of the world and that is where most of our spiritual experience, experiences take place.
turns out that discovering the godly within the natural reality, discovering divinity within imminence through our own sense of wonder is really where we are able to access divine echadness, divine oneness, through the lens of, of us looking at the world is going to be the propelling factor of us touching the unity of the divine. Rabbi? It, it, is, not, it is not going to be us rocket shipping up to the Keter level on a, on a non-stop trip to Keter. It is going to be us traveling through, through the world itself and slowly with stopovers into, into from Malchut, a stopover into Yesod, and then Netzach, and then Hod, and then Tiferet, and then Chesed, and Gevura, stopovers in, 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 our, in our awareness is going to lead us slowly to a realization of, of a little glimpse of the unity that, surra that surrounds our reality. Rabbi Shabri has her hand up. Yeah, go Thank ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, in order to get there, Rabbi, uh, you said that uh, it's very hard in this reality. What about if you transcend this reality and meditate? You could, can we get a glimpse of what we're looking for there? The, the answer is, of course, yes. The answer is, of course, yes. Uh, my, point he, my point here is that, that even when we are talking about transcendence, we ought to yet be, th there, there is an upper transcendence and a lower transcendence. And mo most of us- How many lifetimes do we have here? And, mo <laughs> and most of us, and most of us only get to, get to experience uh, upper, upper transcendence the upper transcendence uh, a, a, for a short time and, a, and, 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 and few times in our lifetimes. Wow. My, 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 point, my point is that most of our transcendent experiences exist in imminence. Yeah. Yeah, how many imminence? It is very... It is very precious and very rare. It, it, it does occur. It does occur. That is one of the 13 principles of Jewish faith that Maimonides wants to make us very clear that, ha that the higher upper transcendence uh, does occur, can occur with any and every human being is capable of this upper transcendence that Maimonides calls prophecy. We, but we are all not prophets. We might, we might be privileged to catch a spark, a glimpse of, of the prophetic experience in our lifetimes, but mostly we operate on a transcendent level, but still within the field of imminence. 
we rarely, rarely, rarely get to the place of, so, so that's my point, that within this world, forget, forget, I mean, keep the striving towards uh, a, a trip to Keter, keep that always open, uh, always <laughs> open, because if we don't okay. keep that open, we are really restricting uh, ourselves and we're restricting our imaginations. Okay. Uh, so, so the 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 uh, the direct flight to Keter <laughs> is available, but 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 maybe we ought to be uh, uh, we ought to be concentrating and focusing on the world of imminence to 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 be extracting divinity and to be realizing the unity and interwovenness and the interconnectedness of this beautiful world with all its conflict, with all its paradoxes, mm -hmm. and to extract a, mm -hmm. an echadness out of the imminent world. Rabbi? The pre I, yeah. Um, Joyce, you had your hand up. You put it down. Did you want to speak? I just wanted to say the same thing the rabbi's saying, so I put my hand down. Okay. Just that not that, that train doesn't get there in the straight line, and it's not a place we live. It's a momentary yes. blessing. And then we had, thanks, Joyce, and we had Mike and Brenda and Karen. Did you put your hand up? Yeah, so Mike, Brenda, and Karen. Okay, good, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Rabbi. Good morning. Uh, when, as Bruce was talking, something started going around in my head, but I wasn't quite clear what it was. And then, Rabbi, when you started talking about this, Verot, as you were going to each one, the levels and how they're interconnected, and they're not separate, but they're just like confluences that, that work themselves into the next one, into the next. And as you were going through them, my, my awareness started separating these throat into like a half between and then a quarter between it and then an eighth and then a sixth. And it got the space got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it, it kind of became tiny, but each speck of it was still a speck of God, but getting closer to the oneness. And then the, the thought struck me that they're all just the same building block of the oneness, that one tiny speck, in different forms. So they become all different faces. The, the each thorough is just another face. Everything that we see, it's made up of that, as you're saying, God being inside of everything. And, and it's just like if you have wood, and then you take the wood and you make it into a table, or you make it into a chair, or you make it into a house, it's the same wood. So the same oneness that's God, it, it comes out in Malchut, in the reality that we're in, in different things, but it's the same, the same thing. Not yeah. that it's a thing, but the same yeah. oneness that's there in everything. Yeah. It just struck me as a more of a sensation rather than in words. So it's hard Be to beautifully put it in said. Words. Beautifully said. Okay, um, Rabbi. This, it, hi Rabbi, it's Brenda. Hi Brenda, good morning. Good morning. So when I was a little girl, I wanted a dog very badly. And I dreamt that we had a, got a dachshund, um, a red one, brown one, and she had seven puppies and se six were red and one was black and tan. And that happened. Uh, the chances, you know, I never said anything to my mother. She knew I wanted a dog, and one day we got one, and then the puppies, and this and that. So what, that was a revelation that I had this dream that came true. I mean, that's kind of an odd dream to dream as a little girl, that, you know, that I dreamed I had a dog, but then I dreamed the dog had the puppies and all that. The other thing was, the first time I met my husband, um, I was 19, and I was walking down the stairs of the dorm, and there he was 
uh, my girlfriend was hanging on him and like she was happy and the other guy looked like he was for me and a voice entered my head and told me that that one was going to be mine. And like in my head, I questioned it and the voice kept saying, that's gonna, that's your Rashid. So um, I've been lucky, I've had some uh, connection um, that somebody's been, you know, uh, uh, giving me clues as to what's coming. Okay, thank you for that, Brenda. You know, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for that. And um, it's kind of like I listen to the inner voice um, inside of me. And, but you have to do the hard work to make it happen. Yeah. So, and Thank I you, mean, um, what, does Judaism, do we believe in past lives and future lives and like that? that not for now, Brenda, not okay. for now. Thank you. But anyway, um, that led me into pursuing my husband. And when she broke up with him, um, I let him know that I wanted to go out with him. And the, okay. rest, the rest was history. He's gone now three years. Got it, got it. Okay, go ahead, Karen. Okay, um, I was thinking about um, what you were saying, Rabbi, about um, that we have to kind of, th that it's manifested in, in the world, in our lives, that God is manifested in our lives. And that's my understanding is that that's how, the tikkun olam, that's a part of Judaism, is that that ha is how we're supposed to, when God manifests, <laughs> we're supposed to stay in our lives and do tikkun olam, that we're not, we're not a meditative religion. I mean, we might, meditation can be part of our religion, but our goal isn't to get to that, even if we could get to the higher realms and stay there, which I understand is impossible. That wouldn't really even be our, our goal. Would be to bring that back to the world and do to Kunalam. True. No. Uh, uh, let, let, yeah, let me uh, ponder that for a sec. It, you, you're Karen. You're. I, I hear what you're saying, but but you you are you are kind of couching it in in a way. You are, you are presenting it in a way that, that, that it, 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 it's an either or. You're presenting it in a way that, oh, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Judaism and in particular the, the Kabbalistic mystical side of Judaism is not, is not a necessarily meditative, it's not a, uh, I'll put it like this, uh, is not necessarily a Keter-bound religion. It is rather a Malchut-bound religion, right? It's the action, it's the Tikkun Olam, it's, a, it's not a Keter-bound, but it's a Malchut-bound. So you, 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 you created, you created in couching your question that way, a, a false choice uh, be, because because in in with this concept of of echad we are able to bridge not only able to bridge we are obligated to bridge both into mummish into one, the exact antithesis of how you couch that question. You couch the question and created a division between transcendence and immanence, keter and malchut, meditation and action, and Echadness is is the 
the answer and the solution to that duality, to that division that you created in that question. The, the presence of Echad, of the one, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, Yud He Vav He, it, you, she, he, is the one, is the Echadness in the here and now that leads us to, to an intuitive in, in intimation that there is something beyond, there is something transcendent that, right? It, it, is, it is the transcendence that we experience here in the imminent that gives way, that gives birth to an intuition of a larger cosmic uh, unity, an upper unity uh, that is occurring. And Joan has- uh, well, Karen, you, you good with that? Yes, that helps a lot. <laughs> okay. It, that, that is exactly what we are getting at, th this echadness that, that is in, in, indivisible and that imminence, uh, our, our responsibility is to firstly see and grasp the echadness that exists within imminence uh, to, fe to feel it, and then use those six words of the Shema to proclaim it and to remind ourselves of that realm of unity that exists, not maybe on the surface of our vision, but deep beneath what we see there, we proclaim a unity, a oneness uh, that is all encompassing. Rabbi, if you're taking more questions or do you yeah. want to continue? Yeah, yeah. Let, uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to leave anyone out of the circle of, of Echad. <laughs> okay, so we have Joan and then Shabri. Two metaphors have occurred to me as I've been listening to the conversation. One is the human body. We have one human body, each. And within that human body, we have a circulatory system, a digestive system, a hormonal system, and so on and so forth. It's all part of that one body. So it's as if all of those parts were malchut, but the human body as a whole is the echadness of God. And particularly with the circulatory system, where in order to be able to talk about it, we talk about capillaries and veins and arteries, when they're all connected and they're really all one doing the same job. Uh, but yeah. in order to relate to it, we have to break it up because we don't have language. So that was one metaphor. The other metaphor that I was going into in my head was we have an artist class after this. And by artist, I don't mean simply with a, uh, a medium that involves a canvas. I mean composers and people who, who dancers and all the things that, that we as humans create. And that, that creation for many is as much uh, giving birth to a child as it is for a human giving birth. And the best way to get to know the creator, which I'm labeling artist here, 
It's through their work. If you don't ever meet them personally, the best way to get to know them is through their creations. Nice, nice. And that's why the best way we can get to know God is through Malchut, because those are God's creations that are easiest for us to access, to experience. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Thanks, Joan. Thanks, Joan. Okay. Uh, what, Marcia, Tabri was next. I'm sorry. Shabri was next. Okay, let's end it. Let's end it with Shabri, and we'll what we got to continue a little bit. Yeah, go ahead, Shabri. Uh, well, I don't know if this is. Um, I was thinking about death. I was thinking about when the person leaves their body, and um, uh, about you know how that then continues till we know and and merge with with a hut i was thinking about death so that's it okay. i don't have to have an answer thank you uh yeah i think you answered yourself uh the, 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 death death is not is not excluded from echad it's not outside of the realm of Echad. Echad encompasses death too, as we have. Ooh, that makes me fine. As we have discussed in uh, for six weeks on the series on death, Echad includes death. Okay. Friends, just meditate on this for a moment. The word echad is the next best thing. It's the next best word to what we consider ineffable. Know that. After The word after ineffable, which means the word, ineffable means I cannot pronounce because I cannot comprehend the, the next word that is going to be coming out of my mouth, right? It's ineffable. The closest language, the closest word that we can use after ineffable is the word echad. And after echad, the word infinity. Echad and infinity are the two words right after we, the, the, is the starting line uh, uh, after this, after I can't speak, I, I must be silent, I must be silent in, in view of this awesome, incomprehensible idea the first words that we are able to, to uh, evoke is echad. The second one is probably ein sof. So let us realize, friends, in this last word of Adonai echad, we, what we're really doing is we are seeking a, a, a type of human language that goes beyond the separation between the words God 
world and self. I will repeat that. <laughs> In the word echad, we are, it, it, th that word echad is our attempt to seek a type of expression, a type of language that goes beyond the duality, that goes beyond the separation between these words. The following words, God, world, and self. We attempt to bridge and interconnect and glue together these words, God, world, and self, that seem on this Malchut level, that seem to be separate entities, that seem to be separate entities, and we are using and invoking the word echad, echadness, to connect in an inextricable way the words and concepts of God, world, and self are really echad. There is no separation. When we speak of echad, we are certainly not referring to the to the pers personified other that is in the sky. We are not speaking, when we speak of Echad, of the long distance God. We are not speaking of the Keter God from the perspective of, of Malchut. Echad refers to the unity that embraces all of being on the Malchut level. The, the single one that contains within it all the variety, all the diversity, and all the wonder of anything we ex can experience here on this reality. The all-encompassing one is the Echad. Yet, yet, that unity, that, that unity, that echadness is also, is also the, paradoxically, is also the oneness that transcends and surpasses all. It is not restricted to Malchut. It yet is, it, it yet surpasses Malchut. And that's what we mean, Hevra, when we have discussed over the years that's what we mean when we refer to divinity. And uh, I'd like us just to revisit these two words because they are really essential. That's what we mean uh, by sovev and mimale. When we speak in mystical language that divinity surrounds all worlds, surrounds all worlds, and memale kol almen, and divinity fills all worlds, all at once, all 
infinitely simultaneously there is a surrounding and a filling of echadness in all reality. Rabbi, Joan has her hand up. I'm sorry? Joan has her hand up. Okay, Joan. My question is, because I'm confused now, what is the difference between Ein Sof and Echad? The, 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 there really is, there really is uh, n not too much, not too much of a of a difference between the two. Uh, Ein Sof and infinity uh, are are the are, are is the essence of of echadness. Thank you. So friends, the, these two aspects of the divine flow, uh, the, it, it kind of, the, the divine flow plays out like uh, uh, what, what, what some mystics and philosophers called the eternal, the eternal dance through our human consciousness, it, it's it's a dance that unifies all of what we call reality with the reality of divinity that that join that 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 absolutely joins uh, the 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 manifestations of Keter and all of the energies of the Svirot into this reservoir we call malchut reality and mingles and 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 just starts becoming one with keter becomes one with malchut depending on how our human consciousness and how our eyes are trained to see. Some will look out at the world and see utter chaos. Some will look out at the world and see utter unity. And some, like us, in the middle, <laughs> in the middle, where today uh, at, at, at 7.30ish or 8 o'clock, uh, I, I looked over the, the sky and saw a, oh, such a glorious uh, sunrise. And I saw and felt the unity of, of the universe. And then two hours later, uh, I glimpse at, at CNN and I, uh, and, and I already forgot a little bit, not really, forgot a little bit about the unity, the echadness within the universe and I get pulled in to the chaos and ugliness of the world. So it all depends on where, where you want, where we want our consciousness to reside.
I think. And we are capable, we are capable of molding our consciousness to the side of unity. Al although our world is quite, <clears throat> is quite <throat> capable and quite ready to show us and to divert our attention uh, to the chaotic and the dark places of the world. I, I see Joyce's virtual hand, but Hank, were you raising your hand? If you yes. are, Hank, mute, yeah. unmute yourself. I, yeah, I wanted to talk about seeing as the rabbis pointing us towards that. And when you take a music appreciation class, you go to a concert, and if I'm in an orchestra, I can hear each instrument play whatever they're supposed to play. When I, whereas my dear husband doesn't have that interest to be trained, <laughs> that way so he he doesn't know what i'm talking about but in nature he can tell you in at least three maybe four languages the name of each tree each bird insect snake uh -huh. blah 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 uh -huh. and so he has taught me to see and appreciate at a greater at a higher level is it at the greater uh -huh. So that that's my point. You know, that's, we can be good. trained, as you say, to learn more. The same with art. When you take art appreciation, you look for different things and learn more, and are drawn into the product. Yes. Yes, thank you, Joyce. We, 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 the point that you're making and that, that I am uh, making is we are more than capable to, to control, to help grow and develop and evolve our inner consciousness to be attuned to this unifying divine flow, this unifying divine force that is the cohesive element in all. It is something, it is something that I, I love it and I, and I, I promise you I'm going to investigate some of this. It is that something that Albert Einstein at the end of his life testified to, witnessed to as a, not only as a super genius scientist, but I believe he, he, he did this as a, as a witnessing Jew. when he proclaimed in scientific terms what, what the Torah invoked uh, three and a half thousand years ago, that when Einstein proclaimed, he doesn't know too much about it, but he knows that there is a cohesive unity and a source behind all of this. In my mind, Einstein on a scientific level was proclaiming Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai, there is an echadness that cohesively puts all of this into, into one unit into one source and friends therefore i have a few minutes left i want us to seriously take to heart the essential vital mitzvah of taking
one moment, I'm not going to put a time limit on it, but one moment every day to take a meditative moment and actually audibly recite, proclaim, meditate on those six words. Preferably, the Torah says, Bishachbecha uvkumecha, you, you, you shall start your day with this proclamation, and you shall end your day with this proclamation. This proclamation, this concept, of the unity of the world, the lesson that our inner consciousness has to learn if we are to extract beauty out of this world, you shall remind yourself of this when you wake up and when you go to sleep. This con this Consciousness of Hashem Echad should be bookends of your day. It should open your day and close your day. And it is through that consciousness and through that act that your perspective of life in general will be enhanced and you will see wonders in the world because of it and your sense of contemplation what my purpose and meaning in this world and how i can how i can contribute and and even fit myself in in my own unique way fit myself in to the un unity in, in the di within the diversity of the universe uh, where I fit in and how, uh, how I can contribute to the unity and not the chaos of the world. Uh, this, is all, this is all built in to the mitzvah of reciting the Shema. And again, uh, I have to repeat, the Shema is not a prayer directed towards God. It's not directed towards heaven at all. It's directed towards, it's as if I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking right in. When we say Shema Yisrael, we're saying Shema Karen, Shema Akiva, Shema Helen, Shema Rebecca. We're, we're, we're talking to ourselves to be, to, to heighten our awareness of, of the unifying energy within, within the universe. How I can, how I can be part of that unity, how I can partner up with that unity. So I, uh, friends, I, I want us, I, I want something practical, something real, something on the Malchut level to come out of this somewhat theoretical, uh, <laughs> theoretical, esoteric uh, uh, teaching on, on echadness, on imminence, on transcendence, and put it into play uh, uh, w within, within the reality of our lives. Uh, and, and go out on your balcony in the morning go out in your backyard, go out anywhere you, anywhere you feel at any time during the day and, and, and dedicate, dedicate one minute. You, you, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be shocked at how long one minute, 60 seconds really is. Right. And meditate, on, meditate on Shema. 
meditate on echadness, meditate on the four attributes of the yud hey vav hey, and connect yourself somehow to to uh, the the realms and uh, of tran transcendence within imminence. And I promise you, I guarantee you, your day will be affected. You will, you will walk around a little bit more uh, on, on every level, a little bit more e exp expansive in, 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 the, in the mind, in, in the heart, and in the soul. It will help. It will help you live, live your life. Okay. I think we, Carol has a hand up, but we have I to, say I'm so. setting the room at 12 o'clock, friends. Yes. I was going to yes. say that. I, I, Rabbi, what I wanted to say to you is I have like an epiphany. When you got to the one thing, you've like changed the way I feel about the Shema. I've been saying the Shema since I was a child. Originally, it was, I thought it was, as opposed to the Trinity, it was one. That was what I always thought as a child. But as an adult, I say the Shema quite a bit, but I didn't feel it. When you start talking about the oneness that transcends and surpasses all, I actually felt it and started crying. I have never experienced that. So I'll just oh, great. That. I'll look, thank you. I love that. I love okay, that. That's when he makes us cry. I Don't love. I love. I love crying, Carol. Okay, Kim. I know. I know. It's it's eleven fifty nine. So, thank we're thank you, everybody. Um, we're going to end the room, and then we're going to open it for Yoel Trajman from the Holy City of Spot, uh, as he welcomes us into his uh, studio. Um, the Precious Legacy Project, the Ethical Will Program, is starting on Sunday. And now more than ever, it's so important that we understand what our values are and um, create them into a format that they will transcend our lifetime. So if you are at all free and available to join, and Merle Safferstein Sure. Is, is, is a human angel in terms of helping um, bring, bring alive the, the ideas. Um, today is Tuesday, right? So there's meditation with Michael and then um, you get the morning report. Thank you everyone for- Kim, Kim one, one sec. Can, can you on a, on a personal, can you can, take a look at your message and respond to, to my text? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Late, yeah, yeah. late. Okay, Chevra, thank, thank you, thank you so much. And I, I just, just mummish fifteen seconds for those of you that 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 are going to be implementing the the, the Shema meditation uh, once a day in your life. If you do have a lover, if you do have a partner, if you uh, whatever it is, uh, uh, it, it's it's a also a very beautiful idea to do that to get to to kind of if if you can if it works out to do that together it increases the the love uh, and the unity of your relationship when you when you do this together and point to the high to the higher unity uh, it it creates a unity and friendship in 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 our relationships. Okay, love you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rabbi. See you on Thursday.